Hello, and welcome to the Basics of Xerotix Remastered. Now this is my third attempt at making a Basics of Xerotix video, as the other two weren't great, like, at all. They both have been unlisted, so they are still watchable, but only with a direct hyperlink. This video is an attempt at improving upon those two videos, re-explaining concepts there, and not failing miserably like I did last time. I should note this video has been scripted, and was checked by people who have brains. Unlike me, who apparently cannot seem to get anything right. Oh boy. Now, before we get started, there are some nerdy terms that need to be defined. First, we have game tick. Now, a game tick is 1 20th of a second in Minecraft terms, but it means so much more. You'll see. Redstone ticks are pretty similar, they are literally just two game ticks, and that's pretty much all they are. Next we have the entire basis of the video, the zero tick. A zero tick is a redstone pulse that powers and depowers in the same game tick. Each game tech is divided into many different sections, much like an assembly line, and each one has its own job. If you look on screen, you can see each section, called tick phases. For right now, we'll focus on three phases, mainly the tile tick, block event, and tile entity phases. Tile ticks have their own weird priorities, most commonly called tile tick priority, or TTP. Tile ticks mainly run on components like repeaters, comparators, and observers. In this case, a lower priority means it'll activate first. Repeaters have the highest tile tick priority at negative 3 to negative 1. Comparators have the priority of negative 1 to 0, and observers just have 0. I wrote a document in the description that basically just explains more about tile tick priority if you ever want to read that, it's there. Next up we have the block event phase. The block event phase handles the beginning of piston and sticky piston extensions and retractions. However, the extensions and retractions end in the tile entity phase. This causes some weird behavior with pistons, as when you extend a piston, it arrives at game tick 2, which works fine for tile ticks, but other pistons will not react until game tick 3 because they must wait all the way for the next block event phase of the next tick to start extending or retracting. To help you understand tile ticks and block events a little more, I'll bring up this observer as your tick generator right here. Now, when pushing a piston forward, it'll take two game ticks to finish extending, and another two game ticks for the observer to activate. So, at game tick 4, if I remove the pulse to this piston, it should zero tick. Which is why we have the two tick repeater right there. Alright, let's test it out. If you look carefully, you might be able to notice that the repeater fired perfectly, but the piston didn't fire at all. Remember when we talked about scheduling earlier in the video? Well, I did say repeaters had a higher priority than observers, and that meant this piston was scheduled to retract the observer before the piston was scheduled to extend. This isn't too hard to fix. We just need to bud this piston using QC, and update it with another piston. Adding this piston will cause the bottom one to schedule after this one executes its block event. Let's try it out now, and see if it works. And as you can see, the piston fires. Adding this extra piston ensures that this piston schedules its retraction after the observer has turned on, solving our issue. We can extend this idea of using pistons to delay other pistons' priority to chain together multiple actions. In this circuit, one piston at the start of the line is directly powered, while the rest are quasi-powered. When I turn this off, the updates will travel down the line, retracting each piston in order. The result is that the redstone line will be connected, then its power will be cut off a few block events later, zero ticking that piston. The updates keep going and do the same thing to the second piston, so this block is instantly moved twice. This chaining of updates to control the order of piston actions is what we call block event delay, or BED. Now, if you're still confused, then you might want to pay a little bit more attention starting here. I'm going to start showing off some common zero tick generators, both dustless and dustful, so let's just get into it, I guess. Now, if you've looked at zero tick generators before, you might know what this zero tick gen is. This zero tick generator runs off of tile tick priority, or TTP as we discussed before. The repeater starts powering this redstone line during the tile tick phase, and later in the same phase, this comparator turns on. This is due to the tile tick priority stuff I mentioned before, and this also causes the piston to schedule a little later than the redstone dust line powering. And once it's scheduled to extend, the line is cut, making the redstone line zero tick. Next in line is this weird zero tick generator right here. Now it's a bit different than the other one that we talked about earlier. It starts its sequence by retracting this piston, letting this redstone dust connect to the rest. Then, these pistons start to extend later in the block event phase, which leads to this last piston, which holds the redstone block. That piston soon retracts, making the redstone line zero tick. This next zero tick generator isn't even a zero tick generator, it's a pseudo zero tick gen. Let me explain. This zero tick generator gives off a one game tick pulse to all components but pistons. Now remember when I was talking about how long pistons take to extend and retract? I said that pistons take 3 game ticks to react to another piston's pulse. This piston gets power to game tick 2, but reacts to game tick 3 when the pulse is removed. So it ends up zero ticking. In this case, pistons get a 1 game tick pulse, but perform a zero tick, while other components get a 1 game tick pulse and actually execute that 1 game tick pulse. 
You can zero tick pistons among other components with long pulses, not just zero ticks, but only in certain cases. We're almost done. All you needed to understand is Rising Edge Bed. Rising Edge Block Event Delay is used to execute block events before your zero tick pulse turns on, or starting the pulse in the block event phase instead of the tile tick phase. This is really only needed in dustless based zero tick gens, as most of the dust ones already have properties like this. In fact, we already looked at two Rising Edge zero tick gens. There are two common ways of making a Rising Edge zero tick gen. One way to get a Rising Edge zero tick pulse is by zero ticking a redstone block, or just pushing it, into a certain space where it can be retracted instantly, making any other piston zero tick. The next one is quite simple. Basically, a dust line redirects and starts powering a piston, and then the piston is updated in the block event phase, and then this iron block is pushed down to apply the zero tick. Well, now it's your turn to try out zero ticks. Here are a few contraptions I want you to try out, and if you aren't at a computer right now, stick around because I'll show my solutions to these contraptions. You ready? The first one I want you to try out is a double piston extender that is ran off of solely zero ticks. Quick explanation, I want this back piston to fire, then in the same game tick, this piston fires, retracting this iron block. Then this very back piston fires again, three game ticks later. And three game ticks after that piston fires, this piston should fire, making this DPE as fast as possible. Alright, with that information, I really want you to try it out. So here is my first attempt, and it's not great whatsoever, it's actually pretty bad. But it gets the idea across. So when I basically retract this redstone line using the zero tick gen as before, it goes through and zero ticks these first two pistons and basically retracts this diamond block. And then it shoots through this piston, and because of the reason I mentioned before where if we zero tick the first block, the next two blocks or however many in the chain will still take a little bit more to extend. And that then zero ticks this piston one more time. This redstone dust line then powers, basically yeeting back this entire column instantly, making it zero tick, and it also updates this piston down here, which basically does the same thing for final block retraction. Alright, so let's see how it works. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And here is my second attempt. It's mostly dustless, uh, because I was lazy. Anyways, let's see how it works. So as you can see, it works flawlessly. These two Observer Zero Tick Gens basically yeet these two pistons out and retract this diamond block. And then later, this piston fires, which then activates this piston down here, which then fires the second to last retraction. And this also fires this piston right here, which would do final block. And as you can see, it works flawlessly. So if I place the iron block back there again and Zero Tick it, it works. Next is a folding double piston extender. Another quick explanation, I want this piston to fire, then later in the same game tick, this piston should fire. Then I want the sticky piston to do a 3 game tick pulse, and then have it all retract, like so. This will unfortunately need a rising edge block event delay, so good luck. Now here's what I came up with when it comes to a folding double piston extender. When I update this note block, this entire system will activate, so let's see. And if we slow down the tick rate really quickly, you can see in slow motion. Alright, let's get into how this thing works. So the first thing that happens is I update this piston right here, or at least power it. And it basically goes through what we call an ABBA circuit. There's an entire video by game for You and uh, Spacewalker that basically go into ABBAs and a whole bunch of other stuff. And there are much better designs out here now, but this was just the easiest way, and the only one I knew by heart. The way the ABBA works is it first zero takes this piston right here, and then it zero takes this piston right here. And this is all inside the same game tick, just slightly different in uh, block event delay. Then this is sent through a three game tick pulse, which basically extends it and retracts it. And then it's all done reverse again. So ABBA is basically activating the A circuit, then the B circuit, and then the B circuit, and then the A circuit which is this. So in this case, this is the B circuit, so we activate the B first, and then we activate the A next. So if we look back at it again, it is an ABBA. Here's the AB circuit, and here's the BA circuit. And with that, I'm afraid I might have to end this video. Before I go, I must give some massive thanks to certain people. Thank you to Purple Dragon New, Pineapple Cake, Floppy Donkey, and Alugia. They have all helped me a lot through this video and uh, basically fact-checked everything and made sure that wasn't being stupid like the other three. They also gave insight into each of the video animations and stuff like that. And like, that's priceless. Thank you guys so much. But with that, I must end the video. It is way too long and I've been editing for months and months now. So yeah, I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Consider leaving a like or subscribing, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye